Becky here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sewing up the Melody dress from Sustainable Cloth Company. Now this is a woven dress. There's like all of their patterns. There's multiple options. I will be doing, um, for reference, it's a 5T. So I'll be doing a youth um, knee length dress with short sleeves and the elastic on the sleeves. Then I will also be doing the back with the buttons so the buttons are snap option is what I will be doing so the sleeves are going to be the same no matter the length it's just going to be a different length in different um, size pieces that you need but the steps are going to all be the same and if you're doing just the straps the steps will mostly be the same and then if you're doing a different back it'll be a little bit different but for the most part all of these steps in this video will be helpful no matter the style you choose to sew. So let's get started. First of all, I just talk about the pieces that you're going to need. Um, as I mentioned, I am doing the short sleeve. So this will be the same for any sleeve length. Um, just your sleeve will be different lengths and your pieces will be um, different sizes than what I'm using but you're going to have two sleeves which this is my short sleeve here you're going to have the elastic casing for the shoulder strap which you will need this piece for every style I believe even the sleeveless and then you'll have the casing for the bottom sleeve elastic if you are choosing to put the elastic casing on the bottom um, so that'll be the same for both sleeves. So you'll have two of every single one of these pieces. Then I am also doing, as I mentioned, the snap back bodice. So for the front bodice, I have two pieces, as seen here. And then for my back, I have two back bodice pieces of the opposites. So you have, if you're doing the snap back, you end up with four total pieces there. And then since I'm just doing the basic skirt, I have my um, two skirt pieces, which are just the rectangles. And if you're doing the ruffle skirt, you will have your two skirt pieces as well as the four ruffle pieces. So to get started, you're gonna take your sleeve piece and your shoulder strap elastic casing, and um, you're gonna wanna fire up your iron when you get to the step so that it's ready for you. And you're just going to lay these right sides together, lining it up with the top up here. And you are going to just stitch this together. And as a reminder, this pattern, since it's woven, it uses a half inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this with a half inch seam allowance and be back. So I have this sewn here. And you can finish your raw edges if you would like. But um, since this is going to be enclosed in the seam, I'm not going to worry about it right now. But what you're going to do is you're going to just take it like this. So this is the wrong side of my fabric. Um, I know it's hard to tell with the coloring. But you're going to fold this up half an inch with wrong sides together. And you're going to press it down, which is why you need your iron. And then once you get that pressed down, you're going to open this up. And you're going to want to press this seam open with the seam allowance towards the uh, casing. So it'll press like this, and this will be pressed down, and then you're gonna fold it in half like this, so that it encloses the seam, and this is folded over towards the wrong side of your sleeve. And I'll um, go ahead and press this all, and then I will show you um, what it looks like once it's pressed. All right, so this is all pressed and ready to go. Um, this is the right side of my fabric, so you can see here, there's the seam here where it's folded over, and then this is the wrong side. So I pressed this seam up, and I pressed this raw edge down a half an inch, and then you fold it over, and you want to line up that folded edge with your seam line there, and then press a seam in here and then what you're going to do is 
you're going to go over to your right side and you're going to top stitch along your elastic casing all the way across making sure you are catching this folded edge as you sew you can use pins or you can glue it down or use uh, like a washable hem tape whatever you choose you just want to make sure you've got a nice clean seam here that catches the back otherwise you're going to have holes in your casing all right so i got my casing so there you can see my top stitching and that on the back and then i'm going to take my half inch elastic and cut my strap elastic which i'm doing a 5t is seven inches so i'm going to cut i like to cut an extra inch on mine just to give me um, a little space and then i cut off the extra so i'm actually cutting eight inches um, but i only need seven and that's just something i usually do on when i'm doing elastic if it's not written to the pattern um, just to give me a little extra to work with and then you're just going to feed your elastic through both ends you don't want to pull it through you want it to stick at this end so i like to stick a pen, pin in once i get it all the way in and pull it through so i have my sleeve and i like to use this is called a bodkin um if you watch some of my other videos you know i love this thing i will put a link to it in the description if you want it's just super easy and great for threading elastic they're just kind of like tweezers got these little teeth on them you just hook it on and you slide that down to tighten it but so then you just take your elastic put it in one end and slide it down and I'm just gonna pull it through until I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave a um, half inch of my elastic out since like I said I added an inch so I'm gonna leave half an inch on both sides so I'm just gonna pin this in there so it doesn't get stuck or get pulled through you want to be careful not to twist your elastic as it goes through and then again, I'm going to leave half an inch out here. It's a little too much. And pin this in place. And then every single one of these steps um, from the very beginning, you are going to do on your other sleeve as well. Once you have your elastic in, um, the last thing I like to do, I had it pinned, and then I like to just um, put basting stitches in there because it's um, less likely that the pins will fall out and it just secures it. And then, as I said, I just trim off my extra elastic um, that I added on. And I did go ahead and I did that on the other sleeve and so see I basted it so I can take my pins out and then we are just going to set the sleeves aside for now so the next step that we're going to do is we're going to take our back bodice pieces and you want to take two of them and you want to make sure that they are opposites and you're going to just cut one inch wide piece of interfacing that is the same length as the height of your back bodice. And we are just going to iron those pieces of interfacing on. Once you have your interfacing on, it'll look like this. And again, make sure you have your interfacing on the wrong side of your fabric. And then I'm just going to flip these over to the right side. And I'm gonna take my other two pieces for my back bodice and lay those on top of there with right sides together so these will be right sides and what you're going to do is you're going to sew up here pivot and come across here so you're going to sew this straight line in here pivoting at this point you're going to do the same thing on this piece again right sides together Right, so you can see here where I have sewn that and one thing I do, um, it's not in the instructions, but you want to just cut the corners at an angle so that when you turn them, you have a nice sharp point. So you want to cut across as close as you can 
to your seam line without cutting it. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our sleeves and we're just going to work with one back bodice piece there and what we're going to do is you're going to take the right side of your back bodice so this is my right side here and you're going to or of my sleeve sorry this is my sleeve open up your back bodice piece and this would be the same thing if you had a strap um it just wouldn't go all the way down i'm going to line up the top of my casing in this corner here and i'm just going to pin it in place like this first make it and then line up my raw edges down the arm side and again this will be the same um, for any sleeve style um, if you're just doing a strap it would go there and you just wouldn't have anything along this side and I'm just going to kind of fold it like this to get it out of the way and then you're going to fold this piece back on top so now your sleeve is sandwiched in there and I'm just going to add this raw edge into my pins and then we're just going to go and sew across this piece here and then you'll repeat those same exact steps with this side of your back bodice and your sleeve. So I'm going to go sew those and be back. Alright, so once they are sewn, they'll look like this. You can see my seam here. And you are just going to take this and open it up. And you can poke, you can use something to poke out your corner here on the back. And you can see how nicely that lines up and do the same thing with this other piece here poke out your corners and there you go so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our front bodice pieces and lay them on top of each other with right sides together and simply just line up this top edge here and we're just going to sew right across there. Once you have that sewn, it's going to look like this and we're, we're just going to take our sleeves and basically do the same thing that we did with our back bodice here. We're going to line up make sure you're doing right sides together we're going to line up our elastic sandwich it here into there and so and then do the same thing with this sleeve on this side sandwiched in there and so down those angles with both of those right, so once you've sewn those sleeves on it's gonna look like this and it looks a little weird right now because it's a little all bunched up but you're just going to flip this open and pull here and so then here is my front bodice the sleeves and then the back so now because I have the sleeves um, if you are not doing the sleeves you just have the straps I'll show you we're gonna pretend the sleeves aren't here um, you would just take your back piece your back from your bodice right sides together match the main to the main and then lining to the lining matching up your seam and sew across there and do that on both sides but because we are doing the sleeves what you're going to do is you're basically just going to fold this in half with wrong sides together and you're going to match up your sleeves at the hemline, the wrist, or wherever, because this is a short sleeve. Match up your seam line in the armpit, and then match up these sides of your bodice here. And you're just going to sew across there, pivoting at the armpit. And I will, 
I'll sew this on my sewing machine and then I will go over it with my serger to finish off the raw edge so that it's not fraying. And then you'll go ahead and you will just repeat that on the other side as well. All right, so here is the bodice. Um, we have the sleeves attached and you can see here, I just went over with my serger and trim that edge. If you're doing, if you don't have a serger, um, you can do a zigzag stitch, but you're definitely going to want to finish your raw edge on here. And then if you're doing the hemmed sleeves, all you're going to do is fold it up a fourth of an inch and then fold it up a fourth of an inch and stitch, and then your sleeves will be done. But we are doing the elastic casing on the sleeves, so we are going to take our two strips of elastic casing and this step we are just going to fold them right sides together line up this short edge here and sew this together with a stitch along here I have sewn your short edge of your um, casing it's going to look like this it should now be a full circle the next thing you're going to do is first you want to press this seam open so that it lays nice and flat and then you're just going to take it doesn't really matter which side you do um, one side and you're gonna fold it down and press half an inch all the way around and I did go ahead I went ahead and did that on my other one so you can just see here so wrong sides together folding this down and pressing it um, and so here's my seam allowance from that seam to create the circle so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your sleeve and I'm going to find, we're going to use the raw edge of our casing and I'm going to open it up so that the right side is out. So we want right sides together. I'm going to line up the seam of my casing with the, arm, the seam coming out of my armpit of my sleeve and pin that. And you're just going to go all the way around, matching up that raw edge. And then just like all sleeves, you will repeat these same steps on the other sleeve. So once you have it pinned in place, it'll be all the way in there. And you're just going to go ahead and stitch this together with a half inch seam allowance. So once you have your casing sewn in, it's going to look like this. And this is pretty similar to what we did here, except this time we were just doing it in the round. And so what you want to do is we're going to pull our casing out from our sleeve. And you want to press the seam towards your folded edge. And then we're just going to fold this down and press it into place, just like we did along here. And I'm just going to pin it for now. So you can see and then we're just going to come over here and top stitch this along here with a 1 8 inch seam allowance and then you what you want to do because we were doing this in the round you want to make sure you leave about a 1 inch gap and I like to just do that somewhere down around the armpit area I usually move it over a little bit because it just can get extra bulky if you do it in the seam but you want to leave when you top stitch about a one inch gap so that we can then be our elastic. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all pressed and top stitch and I'll be back. I haven't sewn it yet, but I just thought I would um, show you guys real quick what it looks like before I sew it. So this one is ready to go. I have it all pinned and pressed. So I'm just going to top stitch along here, making sure I catch this back piece there. Again, making sure I leave a one inch opening in my sleeve and so then this is I have it all pressed but it's not pinned down just so you can kind of see so here's my fold I made initially my seam allowance and then I have it pressed down right to my seam line there and then I will pin it down and stitch this one down as well so I now have my casing sewn on and top stitch and you can see oh that's the right so my hole here in the back. I'm just going to take my elastic, hook to my bodkin, and I'm just going to put it in here and pull it through the casing, making sure you don't want it to twist your elastic 
and you also don't want to pull it to the end there so I like to just kind of pin it in place there so I don't accidentally pull it through so otherwise you have to start over so then you just keep feeding it and shifting your fabric You're going to feed it until it pops through and pull that out. Just kind of shift everything over. And so now what you're going to do is we're going to just lay our elastic on top of it like this and put a little stitch in there and then we'll pull it tight and close up this seam here you want to make sure when you sew that shut you don't catch your elastic in there and also when you're sewing it like this here when you're sewing your elastic you want to make sure that it's not twisted through the casing before you sew that once you have your elastic in and you closed up your hole your bodice is done and like that and then I did go ahead I went ahead and surged the bottom edge of my bodice and I also went ahead and finished all of the edges of my skirt pieces um, I like to do this especially when we're uh, gathering just to avoid all of the fraying and to get it um, so that it is already finished and yeah that's just kind of my personal preference you can wait till the end if you would like but as I said that's just how I like to do it and so what we're going to do next is we're going to take our skirt pieces and I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and we're going to lay them on top of each other with right sides together and line up the shorter seam or shorter edges here and we're just going to stitch down these. Now if you were doing the ruffle you would sew your Four ruffle pieces together and then gather those and attach and then gather the skirt and attach to the bodice so just you have a little bit of extra step if you're doing the ruffled hem but for the most part it'll all be the same so I'm going to go ahead and sew up both sides of the skirt and be back all right I have my side seam sewn so now your skirt will be a circle and I like to move to the hem so if I was doing the ruffle hem I would hem the ruffle before gathering it and attaching it to the skirt I just find the less material you have hanging off the side when hemming it the easier it is you don't have anything pulling so I'm going to go ahead and now hem up my skirt before I gather or attach it so this has a one inch hem allowance so what I'm gonna do I'm not sure if that's the same on the ruffle so check what your hem allowance is on the ruffle skirt if you were doing that version but the non ruffle has a one inch hem allowance so I'm going to fold it up half an inch and then you're going to fold it half an inch again and press that down all the way around and then you're going to stitch this right along the edge there to give it a nice finished hem and then what I'm also going to do after I hem it I am going to put two rows of basting stitches along the top to prepare the skirt for gathering. All right, so I got my skirt all hemmed and that looks beautiful. And I decided, since I already searched this up here, I'm just going to use my serger threads to um, gather it to make it easier on me. So I went ahead and marked my center points. And then um, what I'm gonna do next is I have my bodice here and to figure out how much to overlap it I'm just gonna lay my bodice out matching up my sleeve points there and then overlap it and I'm just going to baste this part closed here at the bottom of my bodice in the seam allowance area and then I will gather my skirt and attach it and then we are done besides adding your buttons and or snaps So I got my skirt gathered to where I think it should put, fit pretty well. I have it right sides out and I'm just going to take my bodice 
or I have my skirt wrong sides out, sorry, my bodice is right side out. And I'm going to slide my bodice in here and I'm going to match up my halfway points and pin those in place. And then okay, match that up. And then I'm just going to finish adjusting my gathers, match up the side seams, and make sure that my gathers fit in there and spread them out. So see, I have a little bit more here that needs gathered, so I'll just even that out, even it out. And what I like to do, where I have found it gives me the best gathers, is to baste it on first and then make sure that they look good and then go ahead and put a permanent stitch in and then you are done. All right, I am done and I am obsessed. This turned out so cute. It is adorable and my daughter is going to love it. I will pop up a picture of her in it once I get some um, so that you can see. And I did go ahead and I decided to do, I was going to do snaps, but um, it just dress just is too cute to just put some plastic snaps on. I did go ahead and put these bronze buttons on the back that I think just really pull everything together and they look really cute with this. And this fabric was from Joann's. It's a uh, I believe linen rayon blend um, just for reference to kind of see the flowiness of it but I hope that this video was helpful for you to sew up your melody dress and if you found it helpful make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for future videos and if you always have other questions feel free to leave a comment down below you can always find me on instagram it's at sobex I will link it down below in the description and you can always reach out to me there with questions on patterns suggestions for other tutorials that you would like to see or just to follow along on my sewing journey. Thanks for watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.